Today's panel is very special. Welcome to the second panel of the Jamaica Year 2000 Vitalities Culinary Showcase. We have three wonderful speakers here who are coming together to share their views on some very specific topics. On my right, as all of you know, is David Wolf, author of the Sun Food Diet Success System. David coined the phrase sun food triangle, and the idea, as I understand it in one phrase, is that it's a broad-based approach emphasizing raw food. The idea is to achieve balance in one's diet, and David places a very heavy emphasis in the book and in his presentations on minerals and what minerals and the balance of minerals and sources of minerals and so forth. Next to him in the middle there is Doug Graham, Dr. Doug Graham. And as you most probably know, Doug is a hygienist, he is a chiropractor, and hygiene is a fairly specific approach to health and nutrition. Doug also has, as his background, that he is a world-class athlete in his own right. And in his work, he works extensively with athletes and other very peak performers. And to his right, on the end of the panel, is Brian Clement. I can go to the <laughs> Morning, Brian. And all of you know Brian as the banner carrier and the leader of the Hippocrates Health Institute, originally created by Ann Wigmore and Victoris Kolvinskis. Brian then was able to transplant the whole idea down to Florida and transform it into what is arguably the finest health institute of its kind in the world today. What is, if you had to put your finger on one core principle that really defines your approach to nutrition and food, what would that one core principle be? Brian, you wanna go first? I would probably say uh, the one core principle that I have for nutrition and health is a principle that at any point in one's life that we're capable of achieving our dream. So if we're 18 years old or 100 years old, if we have a dream that we're physiologically, psychologically, and spiritually capable of achieving it. If not, my question is why are we dreaming? To do so, there's fundamental things that we must all do. One of them is diet, of course. But diet is a later part of our necessity. The very first is mind work. And all of us, as I spoke the other night, come from a history of normality that's quite abnormal. So the second part is a spiritual essence. And again, none of us on the planet today can really define what that is. But it's there, and all of us must embrace it more and more and understand it better and better. So again, any point in your life, being able to reach your dream. Thank you. Doug, one core principle. Okay, restate it for me. Core principle. I would say the core principle of, of what I'm attempting to teach is based on, on two, two formats. One, the use of comparative anatomy and physiology. In other words, to look at the animals that are anatomically and physiologically similar to us and to use the, the laws of nature in a way that makes sense as far as us creating a diet that we are anatomically and physiologically, in other words, biologically adapted to. Uh, I'd say the second point of it is to continually strive to simplify the program, to take complex issues and make them simple through understanding, rather than taking the simple issues and making them complexer or increasingly complex uh, and so that we, we gain mastery over our programs rather than lose mastery to the people who guide us. David, one core principle. The core principle that I teach, I think it's the underlying principle of all nutrition is minerals and mineral balance and making sure that you get a full spectrum of minerals, understanding that every plant mines a different spectrum of minerals, understanding that every plant creates certain minerals and taking in all parts of the plant leaf, stem, root, shoot, 
fruit, seed, every part of the plant in order to achieve balance. Let's speak about microbes. Now this is a biochemical factor that no one can denounce or deny. Microbes are things such as bacterium, virus, we also can add in fungi, yeast, we can also add in parasitic amoebic infestations to that whole overload. I also do not consider the microbial, but cancers, mutation of the human cell would fit into that. In all of these cases, including low blood sugar and high blood sugar, diabetes and hypoglycemia, if one consumes any form of sugar, any form of sugar, including the fructose that we consume from fruits or carrots or beets, it will expedite the development of those microbial and cancer effects. Now this is not something that's questionable. This is a scientifically proven, microscopically shown fact. So when I have people that come to us at the Institute, we must be very, very cautious that they do not consume these. It's not permanent, people. It's not permanent. When I first became a vegetarian, I, honest to God, consumed a gallon of carrot juice a day. I had, I didn't know and no one knew what the word candida was in those days, but I'm sure I had candida. I definitely had low blood sugar. And every time I turned around, I had fruit in my mouth. Why? Because if you have low blood sugar, you tend to, or candida you tend to, or even allergic reactions, you tend to want the sugar, the very thing that feeds you to keep up your energy. Because the proteins and the minerals that David so diligently speaks about in his work are not there. And that's why you're having problems to begin with. If a person wanted to look at the triangle and try and find his or her place in the balance, how might a person go about discovering that without having to spend thousands of dollars on tests or consultations or the like? How might a person come to that? What process of exploration could they pursue? It's simplicity, really, that what you got to decide is, one, do you burn sugar as a fuel mostly, or do you burn fat as a fuel mostly? And some people, a very small percentage of people, burn protein as a fuel mostly. For example, if you were stranded on an island and you had either, say, avocado or mangoes, which would you choose? What could keep you alive long enough? Mango couldn't keep me alive for a, more than a few weeks. Avocado could keep me alive for months. I'm more of a fat-burning type of person. Um, also understanding what kind of metabolism you have. Some people are slow oxidizers, meaning that they burn sugar slowly and do better with the more of a sugar source. Some people are fast oxidizers. They burn up sugar immediately. These are the type of people that eat fruit in the morning and instantly are hungry again. If you're that type of person, you're probably more of a fat-burning metabolism or even possibly a protein-burning metabolism.